सो लेट्स द टॉपिक्स विच आई एम गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस सेमिनार आर फर्स्ट आई गिव ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑटो मोबाइल फोन ईज देन आई विल गिव अ शॉर्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द लिटरेचर सर्वे दैट आई हैव स्टडी देन वील गो टूवर्ड द मेथोलॉजी हाउ ऑल दिस थिंग्स वर्क द आर्किटेक्चर बिहाइंड दिस देन वॉट इज द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ मोबाइल क्लोनिंग देन आई हैव ट्राइड सम हैंड्स ऑन एक्सपेरिमेंट विद दिस टॉपिक आई विल शो दैट देन द कंक्लूजन रिमार्क्स एंड द रेफरेंसेज सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द मोबाइल सो एज यू ऑल नो दैट मोबाइल फोन इज अ डिवाइस mainly intended for communicating over long distances but now the definition has changed from just being a communication device to being a re- digital replica of yourself digital replica because it contains everything like uh, your communications your chats social media bank account passwords and lot more so a digital replica and as we can see that wherever we go we carry our mobile devices and it has become a replica it has become like a laptop which we can carry everywhere so it's very important and it represents us so what is mobile phone cloning so it is a process of taking the program inter- information that is stored in a legitimate mobile phone and illegally programming that to the phone which is which needs to be cloned so this is the definition now uh, the literature survey i have found a lot of papers some but the main problem here was that the technology which they discussed in most of the papers was regarding the gsm and the cdma technology but now we have shifted towards the lte but the point is that the uh, tools which are being used remains the same because lte is based on the gsm and the cdma that were previously existing so first paper is a mobile phone cloning paper it's by karin wishet and etla so this paper gave me insight about what is the mobile phone the different terminologies like uh, imia number or esn number and uh, it uh, like cdma and etc the second paper which i found is about the android based phone cloning so it gave me idea about the different tools that are available we can say apks and which are most uh, most generally used by the government agencies uh, for the mobile forensics or to clone the phone in a ethical way so this paper is written by uh, khayatri gajar the third paper which i referred is a smartphone forex forensics related paper it gave me insight about how the information inside a phone can be used as a digital evidence so these are the papers i to have the pdfs with me um, so starting with the important terminologies that we have to have a knowledge of before uh, getting an idea of how the phone cloning works so when the 1g was introduced it was a analog based system so the technologies behind that were the fdma and tdma that is a frequency division multiple access and time division multiple access so here an uh, unlimited bandwidth was allocated to us for unlimited time in fdma whereas in tdma we had a time restriction for that and based on that after few years of research the cdma and gsm technology came into existence so cdma and gsm are almost one and the same thing but the difference is that the key difference we can say is like uh, the cdma does not have a sim subscriber identity module rather it has a code which is embedded which comes with the mobile phone and if we want to change uh, cdma like we have to change our mobile number we would require to change the uh, instrument itself whereas in gsm we have a sim we change the sim our number gets changed so these are the bases of the 2g and 3g technology which were derived using the fdma and tdma then the wcdma technology wcdma is nothing but wide cdma technology it also has a contribution in the 2g and 3g now the latest 4g technology the 4g technology is based on the gprs and the edge that is the enhanced data rates for gsm and subsequently they are following the 3g pp the third generation umts standard so these are the basis for the 4g as you can see in the illustration that 1g phones are just capable of um, were large and mainly used for calling then we got some features phones like the nokia phones where we can uh, we were able to send sms and mms sort of things then some in 3g the features were same but we got speed better than the 2g in 4g the new concept of phones was introduced like we got the smartphones the phones got smarter uh, just restricting itself to calling 
we got social medias our bankings and a lot of more things included and the key factor was speed speed was tremendously in- increased and now the 5g which just starting to get implemented everywhere it's based on iot and it has a lot of influences so the next is the unique identifiers that a phone manufacturer embeds in the phone so these are the key things which are used to identify the mobile in by the manufacturer anyone who needs that access so starting with the esn numbers to so electronic serial number so esn was introduced when uh, the fdm and tdm technologies were there and later in 2005 it got renamed to meid and these both the technologies are used for the cdma kind of phones and the same version we can correlate the meid and imei as meid is used for the cdma we have got imei for the gsm mobiles or gsm lg and 5g Uh, so we can see that we can get this phones using some codes like star hash 006 hash or by just going to the software or in the old phones that, that is the keypad phones we can see that behind the battery or we can see sticker inside uh, inside the phone somewhere so why do we need to de- know this types of uh, keywords is that previously when the phone was just used for calling so the sim cloning was the main method of cloning the phones because that was that's the all data that the phone has got that can be cloned so this was mainly done using that numbers that we discussed uh, just now that is the esn min or or like that and now we have shifted to the smartphones so smartphones cloning is just just not related to the uh, what we can say sim cloning it has lot more to offer like we have got our app data our uh, passwords then calls uh, call logs sms and the major thing which we can find here is that we can also get the clone of the deleted data like if i have an image i clicked the image just now and i deleted it but i use the technology of phone cloning or uh, data recovery we can see which is a part of phone cloning then we can uh, recover that data also that recently deleted image also that's the key feature which we get and which is useful so firstly i will explain the sim process of sim cloning that we used to get in the keypad phones so we have a usb type of device where we insert our sim card and using the tools like uh, hall hawk or bluetooth wifi hacker uh, it used to just copy all the information that resides under the sim card uh, to a co- to a file on a, our computers and if we insert a blank sim, a sim card under it then the whole the, inf- the complete inf- information gets copied and if we insert the same sim card in another phone the phone phone was generally used few years back and the uh, so the main point here is that we uh, we need to get the physical access of that sim card for short period of time but we need that whereas in smartphone cloning if you don't have a physical access also we can clone that but physic- having a physical access gives a better accuracy in the phone cloning so these are all the various softwares which are used by the government agencies and also by ethical hackers to clone the phone and it has a very large uh, user database so like atop atop atopsy or fir mobile edit and oxygen forensics and msab these uh, all uh, apps provide various features like in the latest trend of technology they also provide a feature of whatsapp message cloning then we can say image recovery and various also this um, these all softwares have the inbuilt feature of sim cloning so we don't need a different software to clone the sim but uh, as we can see that sim cloning is not much needed in the um, smartphones because all that data resides on the apps name phone or sms so that can directly recover from that apps so next uh, it is the architecture of the sim cloning or mobile cloning technology so uh, as i earlier mentioned that uh, the architecture is simple that we have to just copy the esn and the esn number min and esn number we have to put it in a sim card another sim card and insert that sim card in that uh, the phone which which is our cloned phone and it will work so basically this was done Uh, to make free calls in the earlier times where when the call rates were very high to do is uh, 
uh, and used to calls from that sim card and the the one the person who have cloned the sim card would get free calls uh, sort of thing and the bill needs to be paid by the owner so this was the main aim of the sim cloning but in the latest we have uh, moved towards the smartphone so as uh, in the smartphone we have the same data uh, like a uh, data have been stored in various locations like for example i take of uh, contacts and contacts can be saved in sim or in the memory card or in the handset so memory card like uh, we can store in a dot csv file or handset we can see we can sync our gmail accounts and using google contacts so we have overlapping of data in smartphone